Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. James Gill and you've joined us for another clinical skills video. Today we're going to be looking at the Romberg's test, which is used to look when we have sensory imbalances, particularly an ataxic gait. In terms of the Romberg's test, it was initially developed in the 1800s by uh, Moritz Romberg, essentially when he was assessing tabs dorsalis or neurosyphilis. Now, with neurosyphilis, the spirochetes have invaded the brain and will damage the cerebellum and potentially the dorsal columns, which are involved in proprioception. Now, that's very important because with the damage there, we lose proprioception, the knowledge of where your body is in space, and thus we get an ataxic and imbalanced gait. In order to maintain balance, we need three components. We need to have our vision systems intact, we need to have our vestibular systems intact, and we also need to have our proprioceptive systems intact. So vision allows us to focus on one point to ensure we are not moving. The vestibular system essentially allows us to tell which way is down and thus improve our balance. And our proprioception systems allows us to determine where our joints and muscles are positioned, so where our body is. We can maintain adequate balance with one of those systems impaired. However, if two systems are impaired, then that will produce a, 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 an issue, i.e. a positive Romberg's test. So in terms of demonstrating the Romberg's test, my name's Dr. James Gill. I've been asked to do an examination of your balance today. Would that be okay? Yep. So before we go any further, could we please confirm your name and date of birth? Vitalva Salvi, 2nd January 2000. So what we're going to do, we're going to get you to do a short walk, which will allow us to assess your gait. Uh, we assume that it's going to be normal, but we'll still continue on with the examination. Then we're going to get you to stand um, and focus on something against the wall, and we'll see what happens with your balance, if anything. And then we're going to do the same again with the slight changes in your stance, but with your eyes closed. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Super, so if you could walk forwards for it. So at this stage, we're observing the patient as they're walking and confirming that in this particular situation, there is no obvious ataxic gait. So we wouldn't need to proceed forward, but for the system, uh, for the examination here, we will do so. So we want to have you stand with your feet shoulder width apart and the examination can be performed with the patient's arms by their side or crossed over the chest. I like to have it crossed over the chest because it's providing some distraction to the patient rather than their arms hanging. And if you could look forward for 30 seconds. As we do so, we're observing to see if there is any abnormalities in terms of sway um, as the patient is standing there. It's not uncommon, in, even in healthy individuals, to have a very slight sway at this point. However, if we did have a problem with um, the uh, proprioception, or the vestibular system at this point, then uh, we will, might expect the patient to have difficulty holding this position and perhaps they would move their legs or certainly be swaying much more considerably. With our 30 seconds elapsed, we've seen no issues here. We're going to increase the difficulty now. So the next part of the examination, we're going to stay with your feet shoulder width apart and your arms over your chest, but I'm going to stand with my arms either side of you. This is to make sure that you don't fall. If there's any problems, I'll tap you to one shoulder or the other or stop you moving overall. So with that in mind, do you feel safe to continue? Okay, so if you uh, close your eyes, please. And we're going to see if there's any swaying at all as you stand there. So at this point, in terms of our triad, we have, uh, in a healthy patient, we have proprioception intact and we have the vestibular system intact, but we have removed vision. So we're going to get a slight sway. Here it's exceptionally minor, but it has increased somewhat, as we'd expect for a normal individual. However, if we had somebody where either the vestibular system or the proprioceptive system was impaired, at this point, we might expect to see significant sway or perhaps the need to move out of the stance over those 30 seconds. So we've seen no abnormalities here. So if you open your eyes, it's very important when you're doing this assessment, you're either standing right next to the patient or, as my preference, you have your arms out and the patient is aware of that so they have the confidence in allowing you to safely um, ask them to perform this examination. 
There is a third step, if required, with regard to Rombergs, called a, a, a tandem gait or a sharpening of the Rombergs uh, test. This is specific to um, decompression injuries in divers, so isn't used that frequently. And what we'd ask you to do is move one foot behind the other so your toes are touching your heel. We do the same again, cross your arms over your chest, and again, I'll make sure you don't fall, and if you close your eyes. So right away, as I'm observing here, we've got a slight shake or shimmy coming on, because this is a much more difficult test, even in a healthy individual. But a healthy individual with mod mild to moderate sway should be able to complete the test. If, however, the patient stepped out of alignment or the sway was sufficient that I would terminate the test, then that would be considered to be a positive Romberg sign. Okay, and open your eyes. Super. So there were no abnormalities there and you successfully passed the test. So we've confirmed that there's no obvious issues with your vestibular, um, visual or proprioceptive systems. Do you have any questions for myself? No. Super. Thank you. Now I get a lot of uh, requests to do sponsors and shout outs on the channel and I've always said no so far because actually none of the products have I thought were appropriate and I don't want to talk about a random thing as far as I'm concerned. However, I've recently been uh, contacted by Blinkist, who are running an offer at the moment, and I said yes. The reason why I've said yes to Blinkist is I use it all the time. If you've not heard of it, Blinkist is essentially a way of getting the knowledge out of books if you're compressed for time, which is something I struggle with all the while. It's useful to, for me to be able to say to patients, this, if they're struggling with sleep, this is a, a difficult subject for you. You know, Have a listen to this on Blinkist. It's just 15 minutes. If you find that you've been interested in this, maybe go and read the whole book and that'll give you a lot of information about, well, the science of how we sleep. And using that, I find, is a really good way of deciding if I actually want to you know, listen to a whole book. So it's, it's kind of like knowledge compressed. So Blinkist have said, hey, would, would I like to do a shout out? And because I use this and have done for quite some time, yes, I would, and here it is. As a result of that conversation with Blinkist, they've highlighted that they're doing a new premium uh, subscription, which actually doesn't cost any more than their regular subscription. Basically means that you can have two people using the account. So myself and my new wife uh, can both sort of access these, um, you know, books um, as we're out and about, as we're driving to clinics and things. So if that sounds of interest to yourself, I would definitely recommend having a look at it. Um, there's the logo here and um, there's a code in the description which will get you 25% off. Um, yeah, back to the Romberg's test. So in terms of what conditions would we see a positive Romberg sign, we may see in Meniere's disease, where the vestibular cochlear system has been affected. We may see it in B12 deficiency, um, where we may have uh, had subacute combined degeneration of the cord. We may have uh, problems where we've got posterior uh, spinal syndrome, where there's been an infarction to one of the posterior spinal arteries again affecting the nerves back there. We could, as, as mentioned, have neurosyphilis or tabs dorsalis, specifically affecting the dorsal columns. We may also have slightly more esoteric um, conditions causing a positive Romberg sign. For example, peripheral neuropathy, which we may see in advanced diabetes. Here, the problem isn't so much with the transmission of the signal down the dorsal columns, but actually the generation of the signal from the uh, peripheral nervous system in the first place. And as a result of this, that's one of the reasons we're going to strive greatly to reduce the probability of peripheral neuropathy in diabetes because the global impact this disease can have. So, Balance is comprised of three features. We have our visual system, we have our vestibular system, and we have our proprioceptive system. If we lose one of those three features, then balance will be remained intact. However, if we lose two of those uh, systems, then balance will be impaired. The Romberg's test is assessing the vestibular and the proprioceptive systems. 
If um, we uh, ask the patient to close their eyes during the Romberg's test, we're limited just to the vestibular system and the proprioceptive system to maintain balance. If one of those two systems is also impaired, then we'll see the patient step or sway significantly during the Romberg's test. We would, however, need to go on further in order to diagnose whether or not it is a proprioceptive issue or a vestibular issue that has caused rise to a positive Romberg's. There is a variation of the Romberg's test where the patient is asked to stand on a block of foam. This tends to be only done in neurology clinics and isn't something that's widely available. By standing on the block of foam, it removes or dampens the proprioceptive responses from the body and gives a much uh, more effective test with regard to identifying if we have a vestibular issue or a proprioceptive issue. When the patient stands on the block of foam, because they, uh, it's diminishing the proprioceptive uh, input, if they are then losing their balance, we know the vestibular system is the impaired one as their eyes are still open at that point. Well, I hope this has been a useful video for yourselves. Please like the video, if so, because it tells YouTube we're here. And please put any questions and things in the comments and we'll see if we can help you out with those. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, it allows you to know when the next videos are coming, but more importantly, engage with us in the Communities tab where you can help us plan further videos. Thank you. Take care. Cheerio.